Hey guys, my name is Francesco. I'm the fish care specialist here at Fitz's Fish Ponds. Today, I'm going to show you how to backwash a K1 microbead filter. So if you want to follow me right into the champion house, the pump. From there, what you want to do is you want to close the inlet valves. Here, on this system, we have two. So we have two bottom drains. Actually, if you want to pan back over there, I'll turn the aerated back on. These are what you call aerated bottom drains. So the intake is from the bottom of the pond, so it sucks up all the fish poop and everything that sells at the bottom of the pond. The aerators, what they do is they create a sort of mushroom cloud effect. So they basically circulate the water and the, you know, the fish poop and everything back down to the bottom drain. So basically everything gets pushed to the bottom drain. Each bottom drain will draw about approximately eight feet um, in diameter. So that's why we have two on the system. And it you know, works out great. We have no settlement on the bottom whatsoever. Okay, so from here, for, on the multi-port valve, you're, you're gonna turn this to rinse. Then, you plug in the blower. And you turn this valve. All right, so we're gonna let that blower turn off the K1 micromedia for a good three to five minutes. It depends how often you backwash your filter, but for this, I would recommend about every three to five minutes, especially if you're doing it on a weekly basis. So, while that's churning up that craft water, I wanna show you some of the amazing fish we have. All right, so, this right here is one of my favorite fish. One of the reasons it's my favorite is because it's my fish. Um, I left this fish in Japan to grow out for a year. I got it as a tosai. Tosai meaning, meaning same year in Japanese. So I left it with Shintaro Koi Farm to grow out. Um, actually, there's one of the fish Saito helped me pick out to grow out. And uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. You know, unfortunately it wasn't a female, but he still has an amazing pattern. And as a two year old, to be, you know, 19 inches in length is still an impressive feat. We'll put him back and we'll, uh, we'll get another fish up. Um, Jinrin Asagis are very hard to come by, except especially when you're dealing in you know, the higher quality. And as she ages, you could, if you want to take a look at her right now, she's got an amazing body shape. She already has those really nice, what we call shoulders, even though Koi don't technically have shoulders. You can tell she has that very nice torpedo pattern to her. And very thick tail. So as she ages, she's going to be a monster. She's going to my best guess, probably get at least 28 inches in length. So even with these tanks being approximately 15, 16,000 gallons each, luckily we haven't had too much trouble when we're trying to catch a single fish to get in the net. I'm gonna take some of the credit myself. I think I'm pretty skilled, but I gotta give a lot of credit also to these nets we started importing. Called, they're called Irabu. All carbon fiber manufacturing, super light. They glide right through the water, minimal drag, and they're a must have, especially if you have any big fish and you try to catch them. Just a, you know, a regular uh, run of the mill net, you know, uh, is not gonna cut it. And one of my favorite things about this is it has a pocket that's not too deep so it doesn't you know create too much drag but it's deep enough so if i'm going to pulp a fish like this i can still have the body remain completely in the water which is very important when you're moving big fish as soon as you try and pull them up out of the water that's when they're going to start freaking out and they're going to start jumping all right so this fish i believe it is a yonsai meaning it is a four-year-old fish uh it is a sanke from shintaro koi farm one of the you know exclusive gosanke breeders we deal with when we go to japan and the 
this fish is a monster. She had, if you just want to take a look at her, at her tail real quick, she's not done growing. This fish right now, we'll put her in a tub and we'll measure her. She's probably about 30 inches right now, but you know, in a few more years, she'll definitely be past that. All right, so we're back after enjoying those fish. It's been about three to five minutes. So we now turn the blower off. Very important part right here is to turn this valve back. So basically what the blower does is the K1 micro B is meant to handle solids. So, you know, we're lucky here in the greenhouse. We're not ever worried about leaves coming in or, you know, large particulates getting into the filter. But in a natural pond setting like the one I have in my house, it's a must have because when you're getting, you know, slightly broken down leaves and everything chopped up by the pump and ran through the filter, the K1 micro, uh, the K1 micro media is going to basically capture all of that. And basically what the blower does, it's going to blast that apart and it's going to make sure that your filter uses a lot less water while backwashing, which is, you know, very important, especially if you're doing it, you know, once a week and sometimes take quite a bit of water. So what that blower does is it, it basically breaks up that media beforehand so you're not using the water to do that. So from this step, what you're gonna wanna do is open up the inlet valves. And then plug the pump back in. And right here, it's going to run pretty dirty. So when this starts to clear up a bit, we're gonna then turn it to the backwash. Okay, so it's cleared up quite a bit from when it was originally running. You, as you can see, there's still some cloudiness, but that's gonna be cleaned up during the backwash cycle, so don't worry about that. So now we turn the multi-port valve to the backwash. And then you plug the pump back in. And this is going to start running clean and then eventually it's going to turn dirty, maybe even turn to this sort of puke green color. And depending on what setup you have in your pond, your stocking density and the frequency of backwashing your filter, typically you could backwash your filter once a week. Um, I backwash these because our big fish load, I backwash these once a day. So, you know, our water that's coming through the cyclas isn't gonna appear as dirty, but if you're doing yours once a week, it's gonna get pretty, it's gonna look pretty nasty. So we've been running the backwash, depending on your pond, you know, that's the most important thing you're gonna need to get to know your filter in your pond. And you know, right now, cause I backwash these once a day, it only needs to run on the backwash for maybe about, you know, one minute, two minutes typically at most. But if you're backwashing them every week, um, you know, it may be a longer cycle. It depends on a lot of things, how much sunlight your pond gets, how often you feed your fish. And here we're feeding the fish six times a day. So even with this massive filter, backwashing it once a day, we still do get, you know, dirty um, in a sight glass on the backwash. So from here, you're gonna wanna unplug your pump. Very important. Turn this back to rinse. And this is, what this is going to do is it's going to rinse the media right after it's done backwashing because you still have a little bit of particulate to clean up in the filter. So you're only going to want to run this about between 10 to 30 seconds. As you can tell, it's already ran clear here. So from there, very simple, unplug the pump once again. Turn it back to filter. Plug the pump back in. And as you can see, it's uh, going right through the return pipe. And that is how you backwash the K1 Microbeat from Evolution Aqua.